Now at this point, I'm sure you're familiar with the select subject button, but I wanna show you a way to easily improve it instantly with one simple setting. But to prove how major this difference is, let's begin by creating a basic select subject selection. Clicking on my first example here, I'll go ahead and click select subject inside of the contextual taskbar. This will load a selection of my subject, which I can then apply onto a layer mask to remove the background. In this particular case, I can't see the removed background because I have my topmost layer still visible. So disabling that, we can now see that background has been removed. But if you've used the select subject button in the past, you know that it often has hit and miss results and it often misses a lot of key areas within your photo. Just in this example, you can see how we're missing a large area of our subject shirt. It didn't select the area between her arm and the shoulder, and it's just needs a lot more refinements from this point. So the result of this selection ultimately comes down to the rendering version that you're using. And if you've ever used one of the W shortcut tools, you've noticed that up in the options bar where the other select subject button is, we have a drop down arrow where we have device or cloud rendering options. With the cloud rendering options, we get way better selections. So wouldn't it be nice if this was the default for all of our selections inside of Photoshop when we use the select subject button. So to make the better rendering version, the default mode for all of our Photoshop select subject buttons, we just need to go and adjust one simple setting inside of our preferences. On a Mac, we'll go up to Photoshop, settings, and then down here to image processing. If you're on a Windows computer, I believe it's edit, preferences, and then image processing. Either way, once you're here, we'll go to select subject processing and set the default mode to cloud detailed results. With that complete, we'll click OK. Now to prove the difference that we have done, let's go and create another selection of the same image. I'll re-enable the visibility of my topmost layer and click on that layer, now going to the Select Subject button within the contextual taskbar. This time, Photoshop is going to load the selection using a different rendering version. And as you can see, we have a much different selection already. It's selected a little bit more than we needed, but that's okay. We could grab something like the Lasso tool, for example, hold Alt or Option to subtract from our selection. And while holding Alt or Option, I can just click and drag around this selection area like so, and that will deselect those other objects that we do not want. Now I just have the subject selected, so I can apply that selection to a layer mask to remove the background. Grabbing my move tool to move this example over, now we can see the clear differences between these two rendering results. I'll quickly put some text on screen so we can understand what's going on here. Comparing these two selections here, you can see that the device result missed a massive area between her wrist and shoulder where the cloud did not have any issues there. It has a much cleaner selection on the cloud detailed results version around the bench as well as the ribbon of the flowers compared to the device results, as well as it included all of our subject shirt and didn't miss any areas like we have over here. These might seem like little improvements, but you have to remember that all of this is stuff that you no longer have to refine because Photoshop did more of the work for you and therefore saved you some time in your workflow. Changing the rendering option of the select subject button is just one great way of doing that. But to learn more about other selection options inside of Photoshop, be sure to download my free selections guide ebook, which I'll leave a link for it down below this video. To grab a copy of that ebook, just type in your name and email, press send, and immediately that ebook will appear in your inbox. So you can use that to help further your selection skills inside of Photoshop. Anyways, the link for that is down below this video, and hopefully this updated preference setting is something that you'll find useful in your next project.